Hey, welcome back to Flywheel Films. I am yet again about to embark on another road trip in my beloved Miata. And yet again, I'm explaining it all the day before. Why? Because I'm not leaving bright and early, I'm leaving dark and early to try to beat the snowstorm that is coming over the Rocky Mountains. And I'm going the other direction over the Rocky Mountains. Thank God, not through Kansas again. But hang tight and I'll explain everything. So where am I going? I am heading out to Palisade or Grand Junction to see my friends at Flying Miata. Um, this has been a trip I've been hoping to do for a while now, and I just wanted to go see their place, see what they're up to, see some things uh, that I can share about what they're working on, some things I'm not allowed to share, which I won't show you. Even a track day, that should be a fun time with this car. I'll see what I can learn about it and really what I can learn about myself, hashtag driver mod. Uh, but everything's a learning experience, right? I've been told to get as much track experience as possible, so I'm taking advantage of that. So I'm heading that way, literally straight that way. It'll be about three and a half hours to get there, about 230 miles or so, and I'm going to try to beat the snow, which is why I'm leaving so early, because I'm running summer tires. Because I want to do the track day, not on the snow tires. I have no concerns going over the mountains in my snow tires, even, if, even though I'm rear wheel drive, but I'm gonna try to do this with summer tires. Wish me luck. And just like every road trip, part of that is inevitably packing. So I'll show you what I've got. And you might remember the luggage video I did. I'm using the same stuff. These are the bags, the Roadster bags you might remember from that video I did back when I got them, which are basically custom fit to the trunk. More or less, they're not, you know, exact, but they do fit pretty well. But I'm going to basically fit everything I need in these three bags and show you how they really are useful, even if they're not, quote unquote, molded to the trunk. And a lot of people actually have asked what my seat cushion is for road trips. That's this purple right here. So let's get this all packed up and uh, see how it all fits. Actually, my plan with the really big bag is to put other bags in it, like my camera bag, tripod, uh, my backpack. We'll see if it all fits. Right, so some trial and error. Everything's packed. The dog didn't fit, that's all right. Um, but these will all fit in the trunk just fine. Got plenty of clothes. In fact, I probably overpacked. And it's Colorado, so I packed for harsh winter and also nice summer days. All in one. So we'll see how this goes. And I put these in the trunk. I should have just enough room for the helmet. Uh, we'll find out. But um, yeah. So this track day is going to be an experiment because I'm trying some new equipment. Tonight I'm going to buy another GoPro. And I already have one GoPro. So one mounts here looking forward. The other is gonna mount here looking at me, in theory. We're gonna see how that setup actually works. I just added that one and this should be cool. It'd be really cool to have like a four camera setup on this car that you see on other people running on their track setup. So we'll see if that's ever a thing. Some people even replace this. There's a GoPro mount that's literally made to go in this antenna, which is pretty cool. But um, yeah, on that note though, I'm going to buy a GoPro tonight. And I also received a battery, and I just want to comment on how ridiculous this packaging is. This is the box, and this is what slides out of the box, and that's the size of the battery. Look at how much wasted packaging. That's so much space. This could have fit in something so tiny. This is apparently the new Enduro battery. We'll see how long this actually lasts, but I've got a GoPro Hero 10 and a GoPro Hero 9 for the track day. Uh, Saturday. We'll see. It's all an experiment, guys. So here we go. Bags all packed and as I suspected, just enough room for a helmet right there. I could even squeeze a couple more things like a jacket or whatnot. You, you get creative with the space, but uh, we are set. So packing is just one small but important part of an actual road trip. What's perhaps equally as important is the welfare of your car. So I'll talk you through everything I do with my car before going on any sort of long road trip, or even sometimes short ones like this. Starting with gas, starting with gas. Of course, I'm at my favorite place, Costco. And uh, yeah, just gassing up. I mean, that's kind of the obvious thing for road trips. 
I don't really know why I'm putting this in here, but if you haven't checked it out, go watch my uh, Kansas City road trip where I actually document gas mileage on typical road trips. This won't be typical because I'm going through the mountains. But besides gas, you also should air up your tires. Now, I recommend using one of these to double check. I'm at Costco, which has their own air filler things, which is great. I recommend that. Um, can, but plenty of gas stations have air. You might even have an air compressor at home. I recommend checking it with these to make sure it's accurate because a lot of these have readings, but they're not always perfect. Usually it's fine, but I'll probably check it with this just in case. In my case, I think these should be aired up about 30 PSI, so I'm gonna do that. So in this case, it looks like Costco's thing was actually dead on the money. What this said was 30 PSI, this said was 30 PSI. They were all only about three low, so not bad, but I still recommend doing it. Next up on my list is to buy a GoPro, which is usually not on your list. It's just on my list this trip because I'm buying GoPro for the track session. Hopefully it works out. But what's usually on my list is actually, it's a car wash. Now this might sound dumb because who actually washes their car before they go on a big road trip when they're actually about to make their car dirty. But in my case, I'm actually going to wash it. I like to wash it because I like to know all the dirt that's just from the trip itself. It's really dumb. And the only reason I do this is because I have an unlimited membership code to this car wash. This is Auto Wash. They're in Colorado. It's a huge chain. There's a ton of locations. So I could do one wash a day the whole month if I wanted to. So I'm just going to do a quick wash now. So they actually have automatic and self-service. And usually I do the self-service, but the automatic is touchless, which means it's not hard on your paint and it does the undercarriage spray, which helps after snow and things like that. So that's what I'm doing. It's leaking. Nice and clean, nice and windy. I forgot I chose the option that has no dryer, but it's just highway back to my house for like 15 minutes. So should be nice and dry by the time we get back there. And when we're back there, I'll show you what's next on the list and basically last before I go out my road trip, which is, is to break your tripod. <laughs> I feel so dumb. I left this on my garage to, so you could see me packing up the car. And then I tried to close the garage door and destroyed this thing. So time for a new one, but no, the actual last thing is to check fluids. So this is a good thing to do, honestly, you know, regularly, but especially before road trips, check your brake fluid, your wiper fluid, especially if you're going through like rain or anything like that. Um, and if you're in a cold climate, make sure there's some antifreeze in there. Um, ask me how I know, <laughs> or basically, basically make sure your wiper fluid can dip down to low temperatures um, and check your oil. I mean, you know, the usual things, just make sure everything's good. So on the NC, I can show you where everything is. The car is hot. I just finished driving it, so I'm not going to like check everything quite yet. But um, this is the wiper fluid. Of course, there's your coolant reservoir. Mine should be fine. Um, I checked this recently. Steering fluid, uh, there's the oil. Brake fluid, which I recently did brakes. So I've actually checked everything really recently, so everything's good to go. But I'm gonna double check my oil level just to make sure. Um, and then the last thing to do is to actually make sure your wheels are properly torched down. I'm going to do that right now because I just put these summer tires back on and I put them on quote, good and tight, the German spec, <laughs> but I didn't fully torque them. So I'm going to torque them now, make sure everything's good. And, um, yeah, by the way, I'm really, really liking this hydraulic hood lift kit thing. Fantastic. There we go. The torque spec I was told to do is about 85 pound feet and you do it in a star pattern. So one, two, three, four, five. Good to know my Guten Tight is basically 85 pound feet. Um, just do that on all four corners and you're all set. All right, enough prep. Let's fast forward to the action. Will I beat the snow? Did I beat the snow? Let's check the weather. Um, the snow's still possibly coming and it seems to be coming late morning. Right now it's early morning. In fact, it's not even five o'clock AM yet. I'm tired, 
I'm making coffee. I'm gonna make a second coffee for the road. Probably steal one of my roommate's energy drinks for the road. Um, but I'm gonna get an early start. Do I have any coffee fans in the audience? If so, please leave a comment. Let's nerd out together. What do you like to brew with? This is actually like a single origin roast from Huckleberry Coffee Roasters, which is local here in Colorado. I like to troll the world and drink it out of a Starbucks cup. But enough tomfoolery. Let's jump on the road. Just get across the Rockies. So there's not much to see yet. It's uh, just now getting a little bit light out. But you'll see down here, I actually have a TPMS light. I just pulled over, checked all the tire pressures. They're all still at 30. So it's just a faulty sensor or going bad or something. Is there a way to tell if it's one specific one or do I just replace all of them? I'm not sure. I'll figure that out. But um, yeah, making good progress. For once, I left on time. I left at precisely 5.30, which is just a record because usually I leave. 10, 15 minutes late on road trips. I'm always on time for other things, but for road trips, I'm always a little bit late. Um, and I've got, yeah, around 200 miles to go, about three hours, around 9 a.m. ETA, which is awesome. I should be any sort of ski traffic. And I'm really hoping the uh, weather holds out for me. There's really not a whole lot to say about the route. Um, it's just I-70 the entire way, basically. I live about 10 miles north of I-70, right by the base of the mountains, and that just takes me all the way there. Now, what I did to really look at the weather is to check the towns along the route. I wish there was an app, and maybe there is, that could tell you pretty accurate weather along your route, not just in one specific spot. Right now, it takes like manual route planning, so I could check Silverthorne and Frisco and Edwards and Glenwood Springs and Rifle to get kind of an idea of the weather along I-70. The temperature is holding steady at 39 degrees, but I'm watching it uh, because it'll probably start dropping Hard to tell what is up ahead, but I think probably some snow if I had to guess. Oh boy! Almost on cue, looks like we got snow. So I'm just gonna take it nice and easy and uh, hope it doesn't last 191 miles. <laughs> and um, honestly, I'm not gonna film either. I'm just gonna you know, keep both hands on the wheel be very safe. Uh, don't worry about me. It's still above freezing, so it really shouldn't stick to the roads. They treat the roads really well. I do appreciate Colorado's attention to detail with winter weather because obviously we get a lot of that. So just going to fight my way down I-70 and hope for the best. So we made it to Eisenhower Tunnel. It is 27 degrees, snowing pretty hard up here. Of course, the weather app didn't know any of this was happening. <laughs> so can't really trust the weather app. Actually, one of the best ways to get weather information for I-70 is the Instagram I-70 things, um, which I failed to check for some reason, even though I usually do. But uh, yeah, about to reemerge, steep 7% grade. Semi trucks have a 35 mile an hour speed limit, but wow, it's like way brighter over here. This is stunning. I am now making my way kind of down from the Continental Divide, heading into Silverthorne and Frisco. Just beautiful, beautiful landscape. Bone dry roads, now we're talking. This is finally feeling much safer. It's crazy how different it was from the tunnel. Like the tunnel before, dark, snowing like crazy and then right afterwards this now as we enter the valley of Silverthorne and Frisco I don't always
always stop at scenic areas, but the lighting is just so perfect. I am absolutely stopping here. What the? So now that I just passed Vale, actually I just passed Edwards, um, it's really not bad. It's above freezing now, it's back up to 39. Rain instead of snow, which I will gladly take. Uh, these tires actually do just fine in the rain. But um, yeah, the PS4S did okay. It was down to about 22 degrees at the lowest. A uh, little bit of accumulation on the road itself, but the roads I think were treated pretty well. So uh, yeah, didn't have to do any drastic maneuvers to test them. I didn't really want to. Yeah, no major updates. It's just absolutely stunning. Every time I do this drive, this is my, I guess, ninth time through Colorado on I-70. It's always completely different, which is kind of awesome. So this is kind of wintry, cloudy, during the day. I'll take it. I'm enjoying myself. We are now in Glenwood Canyon and uh, it is raining, some snowflakes mixed in, 36 degrees, yeah starting to turn to snow and it's definitely harder than it was on the other side of the pass so hoping for the best. <laughs> All I have to do is make it to Flying Miata by lunchtime so that's my goal and I will be so hungry. This is so beautiful. Now that I'm properly soaked onwards, this is, oh, this is like the quintessential beautiful snowstorm from the movies. Um, I just don't have anything dramatic happening. I'm just trying to drive, but uh, it's just a romantic time with me and my car. <laughs> It's crazy doing a photo shoot in this weather, literally just hours after last night where I shot my friend Archer's Cappuccino and Mitsubishi Minica. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And that was in like sunshine wearing like shorts. A little bit different. Top down, race car helmet on. That was a super fun photo shoot. This is, yeah, very different. All right, I'm gonna be careful now. I think we're out of the scary stuff. We just made it to Rifle. Basically open ground, much better roads. The uh, I-70 through Glenwood and Rifle, or leading up to Rifle was rough. Very smooth pavement, which is nice in the summer, but like when it's raining and snowing, I was hydroplaning everywhere, both hands on the wheel, my hands are sore. Yeah, but um, should be smooth sailing from here. Just uh, 45 minutes left or so and beautiful snow-covered western Colorado.
did I beat the snow? No. Uh, as a matter of fact, over half the drive was in snow, but it was a stunningly beautiful, breathtaking, exhilarating, slightly scary drive all the way through the mountains to the far side of Colorado. Welcome to Palisade. Welcome to Colorado wine country. Uh, not exactly the wine season per se, but there's a winery right there. And uh, it's usually beautiful. There's a river that flows through it. Uh, we'll see how it looks the rest of the weekend, but by golly, I made it. I have never seen Palisade this snowy and magical before. This is crazy. I've literally only been here like in the summer or driven through in the winter, but never stopped. Look at that. So I am heading to Flying Miata now to stop, grab a treat at this bakery, get some work done. And uh, yeah, it's gonna trudge through the snow. I thought it was gonna be dry. I was wrong. It's just vineyards as far as the eye can see on every side of the road for forever. I mean, oh, there goes CarPlay. Yeah, this cable is officially broken. Dang it, <laughs> need to get it replaced. That's crazy, I drove another mile and I came out of the snow completely. It's barely any collected on the ground here. It's just all rain and I basically came out of the clouds entirely. So yeah, it's, it's the weather changes every five seconds. But here it is, Flying Miata World Headquarters. I mean, I think it's their only stop, but you know. So just finished at Flying Miata World Galactic Headquarters. We've got Mike here in the car driving my boat. Uh, he brought his correct hat. Um, he also has a white NC, which you'll probably see in the shop tour video if you go watch that. So go watch that. We're just enjoying this fun breathing day. I mean, you saw it just a little bit ago. Well, that, I guess it was this morning. I drove through heavy snow to get to the shop and now we're leaving top down. That's Colorado for you, right? That's right. <laughs> and now we're out here just cruising around a beautiful wine country. But uh, yeah, gonna go get dinner at, uh, what's this place called? Taco. Taco Party. Party. Apparently the best place in town, which I, I can attest to because it's the only place I've been to in town and I don't really want to go anywhere else, so. <laughs> they have a dock. They have a <laughs> dock the boat. I need your hat. Where did you find it? <laughs> Checked into the Airbnb, uh, being quiet because I just have a private room. It's not the whole place. But these luggage things are fantastic. So easy to unload the trunk with three bags, basically. Well, I put my fourth bag out, but you know, I've been awake since 4:30. I'm going to bed. Track day starts 7:30 a.m. Gonna have a whole dedicated video to the track as well, but uh, <sighs> bedtime. All the equipment is charged. This is gonna be an interesting day on the track. New shirt. And wow, frost. Haven't seen this in a while. Uh, it's gonna be a nice, crisp, cold morning at the track. About 34 degrees right now. Um, nice little Airbnb, nice guy who owns it, um, but he, had the heat on at like 85 degrees or something, so I'm feeling very warm inside. The guy was super nice, made me coffee. It is confirmed Folgers, but uh, you know, does the trick. So, off to the racetrack, which is technically, I think, a go-kart track. 
but this is sort of technically almost a go-kart so not going to be splitting hairs here but we'll see how this race actually goes um i've never done really much track stuff very little experience so this is going to be interesting and uh i think it'll be its own video but um i'll try to throw some clips in here because i'm sure it's gonna be a riot <laughs> But fortunately, it's only like eight minutes away, so. I think it's one of those places where you kind of have to be lost to find it, but it's definitely out here. And I was gonna wash my car before the track, but they said, oh, don't worry about it. It's uh, a dirt road to get to the track, so <laughs> that'll be fun. Made it. Well, we made it to the track. Looks like a nice turnout of drivers, probably six or seven Miatas, but then the other things too, like Tesla Model 3 Performance, a few of them, uh, new BRZ, an old Corolla, I think it is, from 1977, GTR, a few other things. So, gonna see how this goes. Driver meetings in a few minutes. Um, I'm gonna have its own video on this track thing, so go check that out. And uh, I'll throw some clips over it right now so you can see what it's all about, and I'll see you at the end. Your goal is 69 seconds, right? 69 All right, let's go. <laughs> Lights out and away we go. Grand Junction International Speedway. Please don't suck, please don't suck, please don't suck. There goes Ahmed and his Corolla. So this is the Corolla versus the 911 and the M3. It's freaking stunning. This is my arrow. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is my arrow. Yeah. I pop them out That's for really a reason. That's impressive. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. He stalled it. Cross the line. <laughs> well, that was super freaking fun. Once again, go check out the video I did on that whole track experience. Um, of course, you saw some clips of, you know, some of the highlights, but I learned a lot and I will absolutely pursue more track time in the future. I will be back. This is a fun place, Grand Junction Motor Speedway. Big shout out to uh, Brandon at Flying Miata for A, his pointers, tips and tricks, his ride along. Uh, he rode with me, I rode with him, I learned a lot. Um, and yeah, I'll uh, be back here hopefully with Flying Miata at summer camp or who knows. I'll just be back here. It's, it's great, it's a beautiful track. It's surrounded by, you know, mountains, mesas, nice sunny day, probably sunburned a little bit. I did use sunscreen, mom, if you're watching. I uh, did a bit of a ride along with uh, Ahmed and his 77 Corolla, which is just sick. <laughs> Gonna get beer with him tonight. So, uh, but I really like Grand Junction. I love coming out here. It's just always fun, always meet cool people. So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll uh, see you tonight. Made it downtown. Cute little spot, perfect parking. Gonna go hit a brewery before I hit the other brewery. Pre-gaming breweries of breweries. But uh, yeah, this is a cool, cool area. And there's that. Also, can I just say, free parking on the weekends. This is just how it should be. <laughs> Is this the TRD? Yeah, this is the TRD product. <laughs> <laughs> it's a special color for 77. <laughs> I was gonna say, it looks awfully like the new Sequoia orange. That yeah, they exactly, have. that's what it is. <laughs> the TRD Pro version, uh, model. Good God. You know what Brandon wouldn't have done? Sent it. <laughs> no, especially not in my wife's car. <laughs> yeah, notice not we, in that. Notice we haven't hooked my wife's car up <laughs> oh, <too>. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just say Miata is always the answer? Yeah. 
Yana caused a problem. Track record. All around fun thing. Don't let me in with that crap. Stop documenting. Gorilla owner. Right there, perfect. This really is just a landmine. Yeah, basically. Let's, let's see if he gets out. Yeah, right? <laughs> that is freaking wild. Normal photo shoot turned into car rescue by Miata. Who needs a tow truck, really? But, oh, what a weird group of cars this is. 68 Mustang. 2012 Miata, 77 Corolla. These three cars have never been seen together, ever, I don't think. <laughs> uh, but Grand Junks is fun, man. Any, any sunset photos, I'll shoot any car. I really, really enjoy car photography. Obviously I do videos, but like, sometimes photos are where it's at for me, as far as like, feeling accomplished and loving what I do. So, gonna get a drink with these guys, Brandon and Ahmed. We uh, all joined up at the track this morning, ending the day with <laughs> a beached Corolla. Wow. <sighs> the last day, getting me all loaded up. Really nice gentleman owns this place. Let me park his garage. Got the trunk loaded to the brim with roaster sport bags. What a good freaking weekend in Grand Junction. Uh, Got to head back across the Rockies. Try to beat any residual ski traffic. It is mid-April, but um. Loveland got dumped on, as you saw on my way out here. So we'll see, uh, yeah, how it looks, but that's the goal. Just going to pop back across the Rockies and uh, just hope for nothing too dramatic. I like to think of all the drama happened on my way out here and maybe, just maybe, it'll be smooth sailing all the way back. This is Glenwood Canyon. Uh, I'm seeing, basically driving through where the fire was, uh, I guess that's two years ago now. It was a huge fire through here. Uh, so a lot of charred trees, but it's really stunning. And it's just so relaxing to drive through this and not like freak out about the snow. I don't have to go really slow because of bad water drainage or whatever, but this canyon just gets ripped apart. I mean, obviously the fire, which you can see yeah, dead tree remains up there. Rock slides always happen, destroy the highway. Like the highway feels like it gets destroyed in here every year for some reason. So they just keep working on it, keep building it. <laughs> I don't know the solution, but it's just gorgeous. This is a beautiful time to do this drive. I've never done this drive in the morning actually, at least this direction. Um, so this is a first, which is awesome. And it's just beautiful as you can tell, canyon walls. The sun is still rising. I mean, it's 9.30, so it's definitely up, but not like above me. So cool different shadows and 
I, I just love this. This drive never gets old. I will gladly come out to Grand Junction as much as possible. Uh, hopefully I can make it back home on this one tank. I should be able to, but that's the plan. Get back across the Rockies, beat the traffic, and get straight to that car wash. <laughs> now that I've covered in mud from Operation Rescue the Corolla, that was wild. I've also got this uh, Folgers from the Airbnb host. I mean, obviously, great of him to make me coffee, but uh, that'll wake me up. Head home and summarize. Just doing some multitasking, video editing, my flying the auto tour while I'm in the car wash. <laughs> this is proper. Also monitoring for leaks. Got my uh, trusty microfiber to catch water as it inevitably comes through the cracks. That's something I may look into eventually. <laughs> made it all the way back in one mostly intact piece. So how was it? It was awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching another Flywheel Films adventure with the Ghosty Miata across the Rockies, trudging through snow. I mean, there really wasn't much accumulation, but it was scary. It was starting to stick. And I was on these PS4S summer performance tires. So I'm glad I brought them because I had a really fun track day yesterday. I did a lot of great filming with Flying Miata, some of which I can show you now, some of which won't be shown for a while, but a lot of fun stuff. Make sure you go check out the rest of the videos on the channel. Like and subscribe if you like this content. Let me know where else you want me to go with this car. I mean, I will road trip this thing all around the country if I need to, partially because I just love exploring the country from this perspective. It's a lot of fun. So thanks again for watching. Cheers.